Carbon storage versus carbon sequestration. I'm still not 100% clear on this. And sequestration is a term that is being used widely. It's kind of um, flung around here, there, and everywhere. And I know in Australia, Australia, uh, the, the carbon credit programs that you just spoke of, there is a number of these initiatives in Australia claiming to use grazing to draw down carbon, which are then sold as credits to companies like Shell and other entities involved in fossil fuels as a way of offsetting their total annual emissions. And, and you just sort of described some of this as fraudulent or could be fraudulent. Let's un let's unpack this a little bit more. So the difference between carbon storage and carbon sequestration and why you have a bit of a problem with carbon credit programs. Thank you. Yeah, no, these are all excellent questions. So you're asking exactly the right questions. So, um, there's a generalized problem here in that storage and sequestration are endlessly confused with each other. And this problem is actually, you know, it's a problem everywhere. But in soil science, it's it's a double problem because they use those terms the opposite way around to how anybody else uses those terms. So if you're talking about forests or if you're talking about geological formations, sequestration is a process of cycling carbon into them and storage means holding on to that carbon but weirdly in soil science they use it the other way around that um, storage is is the cycling into the soil and sequestration is the holding is, is the holding on to it so it, it's a uh, yeah, it's really confusing from the outset and I've actually I begged the soil science community to align their terms with everybody else's terms. Um, but what they say is we've already had such a horrendous fight over what's the difference between storage and sequestration. We just don't want to reopen that issue. So unfortunately, we're stuck with this state of perma-confusion. Um, I would like to advocate strongly that when we say sequestration, we mean the process. And when we say storage, we mean the outcome. Um, uh, but, uh, you know, it's it's one of those boxes you just don't want to open. <laughs> anyway, so, um, so for the purposes of this discussion, let's stick to the terms uh, uh, sequestration as process, the, the cycling of carbon through a system, and storage as the desired outcome, the holding on to the carbon um, uh, by that system. Um, and, um, and, and to demonstrate that is really, really difficult, not least because we currently don't have the tools. Now, as it happens, I'm working with a group of researchers on trying to improve the tools um, for um, uh, assessing uh, um, carbon in the soil. Um, and um, watch this space. We, we, we've got some quite exciting ways forward, we think, because we urgently need to do that, you know, for scientific reasons, but also to help farmers um, uh, and and also to avoid what I see as now a total, the totally fraudulent nature of the, um, the, the, the carbon credit industry, particularly when it comes to soil. I mean, it's just, uh, it's just not demonstrable. You, 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 People are being paid very large amounts of money on the basis that they are storing, holding on to carbon in the soil, and they simply haven't demonstrated that they are doing so. And so you have this totally perverse situation where companies such as Microsoft um, and indeed many others are buying carbon credits from cattle ranchers who are almost certainly inflicting massive greenhouse gas attacks on the living planet. You might as well buy your carbon credits from a coal mine. It's totally perverse. What's going on here? Because in Australia, the the carbon credit programs, at least to some capacity, seem to be seem to be um, not maybe not driven by the government, but the government is involved and and almost advocating for these these programs. Is this just a misunderstanding of? the science by people that are involved in in legislation it's the same in the us it's the same in france we we're, we're seeing big government drives to support this nascent carbon credit soil industry um so yeah what exactly is going on well the first thing to say is that um even civil servants government um um operators are human beings and they are swayed by um 
these very powerful narratives in the media and elsewhere. And so some of them doubtless genuinely believe what they're being told by people like Alan and by films like Kiss the Ground, even though, you know, I see this as possibly the world's most successful greenwash operation ever launched. You know, th this is greenwash and, and climate denial on a massive scale. And it's been so successful that I think some government ministers, and in fact, I've come across one or two in my own country and civil servants, genuinely believe that they're doing the right thing. But on top of this comes a huge lobbying operation by the meat industry. It's latched on to these claims and amplified them massively and then lobbied um, for um, uh, ranching to be seen as a net benefit uh, for the planet. Um, and, and so has um, sort of thrown its industrial weight behind this uh, utterly fraudulent and fictitious uh, way of accounting for, 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 for greenhouse gas withdrawals. Um, now, what we've seen uh, around the world in a whole lot of other um, fields is the collapse of carbon offset and carbon withdrawal schemes. We, we've seen a whole lot of them exp exposed as effectively fraudulent. Um, most of them so far have been forest carbon schemes, where companies have told um, uh, have told well-meaning people, uh, you can offset your emissions by um, buying into this forest conservation scheme of ours, and it turns out that those um, that supposed storage of carbon is not verifiable, um, um, attributable, additional, or all, all those other criteria that we talked about earlier on. Um, there's been a spectacular implosion of a um, ranching carbon sequestration scheme, um, which was uh, pushed in northern Kenya and had very dire social impacts, driving people off, off the land, as well as um, being completely scientifically baseless. But I think these other ranching carbon credits are going to go the same way. One by one, we're going to see them falling over and a whole lot of people um, getting really stung by this because they'll discover that they've been putting their money not only into something which doesn't work, but into something which is actively harmful, which is actually producing more greenhouse gases more rather than fewer greenhouse gases. Quick one, folks. I get asked all the time about buying supplements and getting blood tests. The good news is I've created comprehensive and completely free guides for both. Simply head over to my website, theproof.com, to download them. That's theproof.com. Okay, let's get back to the episode. So why are companies like Microsoft buying these carbon credits? Is it is that something that's been legislated that they, they have to? Or are they doing it to just appear as though they're environmentally friendly to kind of save face and and help from a branding perspective? Um, because when you kind of just zoom back out, what you're saying is companies that are responsible for a lot of environmental degradation are making it making it look like they care about the environment, but they're really funding a practice that if anything, is worsening the state of the environment and, and the planet that we're trying to protect even more. Well, every company now wants to say we are carbon neutral or we are carbon negative. It's a big selling point. You know, I buy our products rather than those of our competitors because we're good for the planet and by implication, they're bad for the planet. And But most companies don't want to actually change their corporate practices. They don't want to change the things that make make their money. And so instead of changing anything, they uh, just slap on this green paint on top of everything they're doing and they greenwash their operations. And one way of doing that is by buying carbon offsets. Now, I'm very skeptical about carbon offsets in general for several reasons, partly because it's just mathematically impossible to offset the amount of emissions that we're producing. Um, and you just have to cut those emissions at source if we're going to uh, um, um, prevent climate breakdown. Uh, but also because um, they're, they're, the moral hazard is very great. It's, it's like a green light to carry on doing whatever you're doing, however damaging it might be, because one day somewhere, somehow, 
we're going to swallow up those emissions by growing trees or by changing other people's light bulbs or whatever it might be. And I'm not saying that all of these carbon offsets are fraudulent. There are carbon offsets around the world, which I think are genuine. But um, you, if you just keep on burning and burning and burning carbon and producing more and more greenhouse gases, you, there's simply not going to be enough plan planetary capacity to to swallow up the impacts of what you're doing. Um, and and so it's just a way of keeping the whole destructive machine rolling. And it's used very effectively by lobbyists to say, don't regulate us. We don't have to change what we're doing because we've got another way of making those carbon emissions disappear. Whereas actually all the evidence shows that we urgently need to regulate these companies. We need to regulate some of them out of existence. I mean, private jets would be a classic example of that. You know, however many offsets a billionaire buys to make up for the emissions from their private jets, uh, uh, they're, they're, they're still a massive polluter. Uh, and we just have to say, sorry, no more private jets. That, that seems an obvious step to take. But offsets are a very good way of avoiding that step. So you said there are some legitimate offset programs. How do we know as a consumer if we're being marketed to or maybe we're buying a plane ticket you know often there's a little box there do we want to buy yeah, a $5 yeah. carbon offset is that just to make us feel good or are we are we contributing to the environment in in any way in a positive way or is there a way for us to work out if that carbon offset is legitimate or fraudulent i'm afraid at the moment it's really difficult to tell because a lot of the verification companies have been exposed by the implosion of some of these offset schemes as basically verifying stuff which shouldn't have been verified. And the whole offset industry is now in total disarray. Um, a, a lot of people were warning way back, this is going to happen, and those warnings were not heeded. Um, so it's very hard now for, for your ordinary consumer who doesn't have a PhD in these things to, to, to work out what actually stands up and and what doesn't um and i mean i don't know um i mean i've i've never bought an offset because i've tried not to um create those greenhouse gas emissions in the first place and i think that is really the only reliable way of doing it mm -hmm.